All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Fallen Flags America. I'm your host, LM Productions, and today's video we'll be discussing the Pennsylvania the Pennsylvania Railroad GG1. But before we talk about the GG1, we must discuss its prototype model, the 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 R1. The R1 was a prototype locomotive that was built in 1934. The Baldwin Locomotive Works of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, with electrical equipment by Westinghouse for the Pennsylvania Railroad. It was built as a comp competitor to the GG1 design after trials of the GG1 was selected for volume production on the basis of its, basis of its superior tracking and riding qual qualities. The R1 prototype, however, remained in service. It was numbered 4800 originally, swapped numbers with, with the various GG1 prototype, victorious GG1 prototype to 4899, but was moved in May of 1940 to 4999 to make room for the expanding GG1 fleet. For many years, the R1's regular duties involved hauling the westbound Broadway Limited and returning eastward with a mail and express train. The, the long ridge of wheelbase of the locomotive caused, caused occasional derailments in Sunnyside Yard and elsewhere. The R1 was withdrawn from service and sent for scrap in 1958. The R1 had four driven axles with a ridge of locomotive frame, similar to a steam locomotive. Each, each was driven by two 625 horsepower or 466 kilowatt traction motors, driving the wheels through a quill drive and sprung cups. Each end of a double end nut notation, AAR uh, D, 2D2, I'm not even going to try and say that. Besides the R1, the PRR did not build any of, did not build or order any other 484 locomotives. However, the T1 duplex was essentially a 484 with two sets of driving wheels, making it a 4444. In many respects, the design resembled the earlier but lighter P5 with an extra driving axle and lower axle loads. So the R1 was essentially the prototype of what would become the, G1, the GG1. Now we get into the GG1. The GG1 was a was a uh, electric locomotive. It was built for the Pennsylvania Railroad in 1934 up to 1943. It was built it was built by General Electric and Baldwin. Well, I should say General Electric and Westinghouse. I'll just read what it says on here. The Pennsylvania Railroad GG1 was a class of electric locomotive built for the Pennsylvania Railroad in the northeastern U.S. Between 1934 and 1943, General Electric and the PRR's own Altoona, Altoona Works, which will later be, re be renamed Altoona Shops, which it still retains that name to this day, built 139 GG1s. The GG1 entered service with the PRR in, in 1935 and ran on to successor railroads, Penn Central, Comrail, and even Amtrak. The last GG1 was retired by New Jersey Transit in 1983. Most have been scrapped, but 16 were preserved in museums. So the designer of a GG1 includes General Electric, Donald Do Donor and Raymond Lou Louis Lou Louis Louis, who was also the same the same guy who designed the T one. So there were fifteen of them built by General Electric, and one hundred twenty four were built by Pennsylvania by P the PRR's own Altoona Works in Altoona, Pennsylvania. So that means that the bulk of them that were in service were were Pennsylvania built off GE diagrams and kits. Technical information: body and mechanical. The GG1 was 79 feet long and six inches long, 
79 feet and 6 inches long, and weighed a hefty 475,000 pounds. The frame of the locomotive was in two halves joined with a ball and socket joint, allowing the locomotive to negotiate sharper curves. The body rested on the frame and was, cl and was clad in welded steel plates. The control cabs were near the center of the locomotive on each side of the main oil-cooled oil -cool transformer and the oil-fired train heating boiler. This arrangement, first used in the PRR's modified P P5 class, provided for, the gr for greater crew safety in a collision and proved for a bi-directional operation of the locomotive. Using the wide no notation for steam locomotives, each frame is a 460 locomotive, in which the PRR Railroad's classification system is G. The GG1 has two such frames back to back. This means that it is a 460-064. The related AAR wheel arrangement classification is a 2CC2. This means one frame mounted upon a set of a set of two axles, unpowered the two, and the three axles, the C, hinged with the ball and socket to another frame of the same design, the plus. The unpowered two axles are at either end of the locomotive. The GG1 came the GG1s came equipped with Leslie A200 horns. Electric electrical and propulsion. A panograph on each end of the locomotive body was used to collect the 11,000 voltage, 25 hertz alternating current, AC, from overhead lines. In operation, the leading pan panograph was usually kept lowered and the trailing was raised to collect the current, since if the rear panograph failed, it would not need to strike the forward panograph. A transformer between the two cabs stepped down, step, stepped down the 11,000 volt voltages for the needed traction motors and other equipment. 12 385 horsepower or 287 kilowatt GEA 627 A1 traction motors AC commuter motors not AC induction motors drove the GG1's 57 inch system or 1448 millimeters diameter driving driving each axle. The, tra two motors. two motor wheels on six axles using a quill drive. The power required was such that double traction motors were used with two traction motors driving each axle. The traction motors were six, six pole field, 400 volts, 25 hertz rated each at 385 horsepower or 287 kilowatts. The motors were frame mounted using quill drives to the sprung, sprung driving wheels, proving, providing a flexible suspension system across a relatively long locomotive frame, which allowed full, full wheel weight to rest on the, locomo on, the, on the rail for good traction regardless of track condition. A series of, of wound commodore mo motor speed is increased by increasing the applied voltage to the motor, thus increasing the current through the motor's ar ar armature, which is necessary for increasing its torque, thus increasing motor speed. The engineer's cab had a 21 position controller for applying voltage to the motors. Four unpowered leading tra slash trailing wheels were mounted on each end of the locomotive. Steam generation for heating. At the time of GG1's introduction, railroad passenger cars required steam from the locomotive to operate heating equipment. The GG1 had an oil-fired steam generator to provide this, this steam to the train steam line. History. Beginning in the early 1910s, the PRR received the FF1, which was a much smaller ver which was a much more complex version of what, which was um, 
what came before before the GG1, but decided it was too slow for passenger trains and was regulated to heavy freight service. In the mid-1920s, they received the L5 electric, which had third rail power supply at the time. When Pennsylvania built the O1 and the P5, they chose the P5 over the O1 for its ability and power on the rails. After a grade crossing accident with the P5, the cab was moved to the center and was designated P5A. Pennsylvania still searched for the ultimate electric since the P5 did not track well at high speeds and were wondering if a P5A could be improved even further. Soon enough, the PRR was in luck and found two contracts as early as 1932. The mechanical design of the GG1 was based largely on the New Haven EP3, which had been borrowed from the New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad, the New Haven, by the PRR to, com to compare it to its standard electric locomotive, the P5A. In 1933, the PRR decided to replace its P5A locomotives and told General Electric and Westinghouse to design prototype locomotives with the following specifications. A lighter axle load, more power than the P5A, a top speed of at least 100 miles per hour, or 160 kilometers an hour, a streamlined body design, <clears throat> and a single central control cab. Both companies delivered their prototypes to, to PRR in August 1934. General Electric submitted the GD1 and Warehouse, Westinghouse submitted the R1. The R1 was essentially little more than an inaugurated, more powerful version of the P5A, with an AAR wheel arrangement of, 2D, of 2D2. Both locomotives were tested for 10 weeks in regular service between New York and Philadelphia, on a test track at Claymont. Because the R1's rigid wheelbase prevented it from negotiating sharp curves and some railroad switches, the PRR chose the GG1 and ordered 57 additional locomotives on November 10, 1934. Of the 57, 14 were to be built by General Electric in Erie, Pennsylvania, and 18 at the Altoona Works. The remaining 20 locomotives were to be assembled at Altoona of electrical components from Westinghouse in East Pittsburgh and chassis and the chassis from Baldwin Locomotive Works in Eddystone. An additional 81 locomotives were then built at Altoona between 1937 and 1943. On January 28, 1935, to mark the competition of the electric line from Washington, the completion of the electric line from Washington, D.C. to New York City, the PRR ran a special train hauled by, P by PRR number 4800 before it opened the line for rec revenue service on February 10th. It made a round trip from D.C. to Philadelphia and on, and on its return trip set a speed record by arriving back in Washington, D.C. an hour and 50 minutes before its departure from Philadelphia. That is fast. In 1945, the, pit, the GG1 once again became famous, this time hauling the funeral train of, Pre, of President Franklin D. Roosevelt from Washington Union Station to New York, Pennsylvania Station. In the mid-1950s, with declining demand for passenger train service, GG1's 4801 to 50, 4857 were re-geared for a maximum speed of 90 miles per hour for 140 kilometers per hour, and replaced in freight service. They initially retained their heat their heating scene generator and were recalled to pasture service for holiday season mail trains, passenger extras, such as those for those for the those for the, for the annual Army Navy football game in Philadelphia. And here we see pictures of a GG1. This picture is of a is of uh, former PRR 4896, now under Penn Central Control, with the afternoon congressional in Washington Union Station, January 18, 1969. This is only a year into the end of the Penn Central merger. And here we see another picture of a GG1, number 4899, at New. Newark, New Jersey, in September of 1964. 
This is toward the final days of the PRR. Timetable speed limit for the GG1 was 75 to 80 miles per hour until 1967 when some were allowed to reach 100 miles per hour for a couple of years when Metroliner cars were being overhauled in the late 1970s. The GG1s were again allowed 100 miles per hour for a short time when hauling Amfleet cars on trains scheduled to run 224.6 mi miles from New York to Washington in three hours, 20 to 25 minutes. In June, June 8, 1968, two Penn Central GG1s hauled Robert F. Kennedy's funeral train. Shell design. The first designer for the GG1 project was industrial designer Ronald R. Duller, who produced an and initial scale, scale styling models, although the completed prototype looks somewhat different. At some point, PRR hired famed industrial designer Raymond Louie to enhance the GG1's aesthetics. The final design was respectively Art Deco as we know it today. Although it was fought until 2009 that Louie was, was solely responsible for gg one styling, Dollar is now, is now understood to have contributed as well. Dollar's GG1's designs influenced the modified P5As, which debuted before the GG1, not as, what, as was thought the other way around. Louie did claim that he recommended the use of a smooth, white, welded body instead of a riveted one using the prototype. Louie also, also added five gold pinstripes and a Brunswick green paint scheme. In 1952, the paint scheme was changed to Tuscan red. Three years later, the pen stripes were simplified to a single stripe, and large red keystones were added. Incidents. On September 6, 1943, the Congressional Limited crashed at Frankfurt Junction in the Kinston neighborhood of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the United States. The train was pulled by GG1-4930, and the accident was caused by a journal box fire, a hot box, on the front car of, se of, seven of six number 7 of 16. The journal box was subsequently seized, and an axle snapped, catching itself on the underside of a track and ca capitating the car upwards. It struck a signal gantry, which peeled off its roof along, along, the, along the line of windows like a can of sardines. Car number eight wrapped itself around the gantry up tight in a, in a figure U. The next six cars were scattered at odd angles all over the tracks, and the last two cars remained undamaged. In total, 79 passengers died, all from cars seven and eight, and, one, and another, another 177 were injured, some seriously. The second incident occurred on January 15, 1953. Train 173, the overnight Federal from Boston, was approaching Washington behind GG1 4876. The train passed the signal 2.1 miles or 3.4 kilometers north of Union Station between 60 and 70 miles per hour, or 97 and 133 kilom 113 kilometers per hour, and the engineer decreased the throttle and started applying the brakes. And the engineer realized that the train was not slowing down, he began applying the emergency brake, which again had no effect. He sounded the engine's horn. A signalman, hearing the horn and note of a speed of 4876, phoned ahead to the station master's office. 4876 negotiated several switches without derailing at speeds well over safe speed limits and entered the station around 35 to 40 miles per hour, or 56 to 64 kilometers per hour. The train demolished the blowing post, continued through the station master's office, and into the concourse, where it fell through the floor into the station's basement. Thanks to the excavation of the concourse, there are no fatalities in the station or aboard the train. A temporary floor was, floor was erected over the engine, and the hole created for the inauguration of President Dwight D. Eisenhower. And the hole created for the inauguration of Dwight D. Eisenhower.
4876 was eventually dismantled, removed from the basement, and reassembled in Altoona, where it is preserved today at the B&O Railroad Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. The accident was determined to have been caused by a closed angle cock valve on the front and rear of all locomotives and rail cars used, at, used on the train's air brake system. On the rear of the third car of the train, the handle of the air cock had been, had been improperly placed and it contact, contacted the bottom of the car. Once it was closed, the air, the air, air brake pipe on, on all, all the cars behind the closed valve remained at full pressure, keeping the brakes released on those cars while the brakes on the locomotive and first three cars were applied in emergency. This was the only major wreck involving a GG1 in the entirety of its 49-year career. The only major electro electromechanical breakdown of a GG1 was caused by a blizzard which, swept, which slept, swept across the northeast, northeast U.S. in February 1958. The storm nearly put half of the GG1s out of service. Exceptionally fine snow caused by extreme by the extreme low temperatures, was able to pass through the traction motor's air filters and into the electrical components. When the snow melted, it short-circuited the components. On about 40 units, the air intakes were moved to a position under the pantographs. Disposition. In 1968, the Pennsylvania Railroad, with its surviving 119 GG1s, merged with the New York Central to form one of the worst mergers that has ever been witnessed in railroad history, this being the Penn Central Railroad. Thankfully, after its creation in 1971, Amtrak purchased 30 GT1s for $50,000 each and leased another 21 of them, of which 11 were in use on the New York and Long Beach commuter trains. Amtrak renumbered the per the purchase GG1s to 900 through 929 as a solid black, later renumbered with a prefix 4. The lease units with conflicting numbers were then renumbered to 4930 to 4939, except 4935, which kept its old PRRVC number. Amtrak attempted to replace the GG1s in 1975 with the General Electric E60, but this was not successful. A 102 mile per hour slash or 164 kilometer mile per hour derailment during testing had to be investigated. The E60 used the same trucks as the P30CH or Pooch diesel then in service of Antrac, which delayed acceptance and the hope and in the hope for 120 miles per hour or 193 kilometers per hour service speed was never achieved. The time the timetable limit was 90 miles per hour, then 80, then 90. It was not until Amtrak imported two lightweight European locomotives, numbers X9, X995 and RC4A, built by ASEA of Sweden, and, and X996, a French design, that a replacement was found. The ASEA design, intentionally nicknamed the Swede as Swifty, or the Minky Mighty Mouse, and later referred to often as the Swedish Meatball, was the winning design. Electromotive Diesel, then a part of General Motors, was licensed to build it and became the basis for what would become known as the AEM-7, or Toaster. With AEM-7s on hand, Amtrak finally replaced its GG1s. GG1 service on Amtrak ended officially on April 26, 1980. As for Penn Central, it went bankrupt in 1970, and its freight operations were later assumed by government-controlled Conrail, which used 68 GG1s in freight service until the end of electric tra traction in 1980. The last GG1s were some of the 13 assigned to New Jersey Transit, no 480. 4872 through 4884 for its North Jersey coastline between New York and South Amboy, former New Jersey, and Long Beach. 
that ran until October 29th, 1983, thus bringing an end to GT1 service on the Northeast, with these locomotives racking almost 50 years of service upon retirement. Preservation. Fifteen production locomotives and the prototype were preserved in museums. All were on site at display. If they had, if they had, if they had to have their main transformers removed due to the pre presence of PCP, C PCBs in the insulating oil, oh, none are operational as they had to have their main transformers removed due to the presence of P PCPs in the insulating oil. PRR 4800. It is preserved at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania in Strasburg, Pennsylvania, nicknamed Old Rivets, due to it being the only GG1 to have been built of a riveted body. PRR 4859. It is preserved at the Transportation Center in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, designated the Pennsylvania State Electric Locomotive in 1987. PRR 4876. It is preserved at the B&O Railroad Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. PRR 4877. It is preserved at the United States Railroad Historical Society of New Jersey in Boonton, New Jersey, nicknamed Big Red. PRR 4879. It is also preserved at the United States Railroad Society of New, Jer of New Jersey, Boonton, New Jersey. PRR 4882. It is preserved at the National New York, New York Central Railroad Museum in Elkhart, Indiana, currently painted in Penn Central colors. PRR 4890. It is preserved at the National Railroad Museum of Green Bay, Wisconsin. PRR 40, 4903. It is preserved at the, the Museum of the American Railroad in Frisco, Texas. This GG1 hauled Robert, Robert F. Kennedy's funeral train along with GG1 4901 from New York to Washington on June 8, 1968. PRR 4932. It is preserved at the Letterstocking Railway Museum in Copperstown Junction, New York. It was purchased by, hip, by, by, the, by, the, by Henry Ford. Oh, the Henry Ford. Well, I I learn something every day. PRR 4913. It is preserved at the Railroaders Memorial Museum in Altoona, Pennsylvania, the same place she was built. PRR 4917. It is also preserved at the Blair Stocking Railroad Museum of Copperstown Junction, New York. PRR 4918 and 19. They are preserved at the Museum of Transportation in St. Louis, Missouri, was once property of the Smithsonian Institution, and the Virginia Museum of Transportation of Roanoke, Virginia, respectively. PRR 4927. It is preserved at the Illinois Railway Museum in Union, Illinois. PRR 4933. It is preserved at the Central New York chapter of the National Railroad Historical Society in Cyprus, New York. It has been cosmetically restored and is on display at the MYS Fairgrounds Historical Train Exhibit. And finally, PRR 4935. It is preserved at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania of Str in Strasburg, Pennsylvania, nicknamed Blackjack. Here we see former Amtrak 4939. This was one of the locomotives that was leased from Penn Central. As you can see, it's still in its Penn Central black, displaying its Penn Central logo. Albeit, it is undergoing restoration. Um, let's see here. In popular culture, during the mid-1930s, the art of streamline, streamlining became more popular, especially with locomotives, as it converted a sense of speed. While other railroads were introducing streamlined trains, such as Union Pacific's 
M10000, or the Chicago Burleson and Quincy with the Zephyr, the PRR had the GG1. The GG1 has shown up over the years in more advertisements and movie clips than any other locomotive. It was also featured in art calendars provided by PRR, which were used to promote its reputation in the public eye. It has appeared in, in the films The Broadway Limited in 1941, The Clock in 1945, Blast of the Silence in 1961, the 1962 version of the Matur Maturian Candidate, and the Avalon in 1990 in the PRR paint scheme. Two GG1s appear in the 1973 film The Seven Ups, a black pin central locomotive, and a silver, red, and blue Amtrak locomotive, painted in Phase 1 Amtrak colors. A pin central GG1 also appears in another 1973 film, The Last Detail. PRR GG1 No. 4821 appears briefly in the 1952 film The Greatest Show on Earth, hauling the Ringling, Ringling Brothers ba Barnum and Bailey Circus Train into Philadelphia's Greenwich Yard, with the movie's director, Cecil, Cecil M. De DeMille, narrating the scene of their arrival. Near the end of a 1951 film, The Bright Victory, 4849 of GG1 is shown pulling into the station. A GG1 and the Congressional were featured in a postage, postage stamp as part of the United States Postal Service all aboard 20th, 20th Century American Train Set in 1999. PC Games Railroad Tycoon 2, Railroad Tycoon 3, Sid Myler's Railroads, Train Fever, Transport Fever, and Transport Fever 2 allow for players to purchase and operate the GG1 locomotive engines on their train routes. The GG1 is also available in the default trains simulator games in recent years, and they have also been made available for add-ons for Railworks, Train Simulator by, Do by Dovetail Games, and Microsoft Train Simulator. The magnificent GG1 video by Mark, Mark 1 documents the locomotive's history. Model GG1s have also been produced in G, O, S, H, O, and N scales by Ravarasi, Bachman, Tyco, Lionel, MTH, USA Trains, Cato, Aster, Fine Art Models, and other manufacturers. And that about sums up our, our video about the PRR GG1. It's hard to believe that this locomotive actually had 49 years of service when they were retired. Some over that. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this amazing video. If you like, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out for, on another amazing video just like this. Or if you want to see these GG1s, don't, don't forget to subscribe. You'll get your own GG1. I'll provide it to you, free shipping and all. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoy, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. But until we meet again somewhere out there in the high iron or in the electrical currents of Philadelphia, this is, this is the L&M Productions, out.